In this video, we're going to talk about a very special class of functions called linear functions. Definition. A function f from rn into rm is said to be linear if for any s and t scalars and u v in the domain r n we have that f of s u plus t v is equal to s f of u plus t f of v. And these are also called linear transformations. And these are a very, very important class of functions exactly because they behave really well with the algebraic structure of vectors. And we can really characterize these in terms of concepts that we already know. Theorem. If f from rn into rm is linear, then there is an n by m or m by n matrix A such that f of x is equal to ax for all x in Rn. And that's not too difficult to prove. And we just need to know where f is taking a canonical basis. So let ai, this vector, be equal to f of EI, where EI is this vector of ones and zeros where everything is zero except for the ith entry where I put a one. This is the canonical basis. You should look that up in your book. And set A to be equal to the matrix obtained by joining all of these columns. So this is A1, my vector A1, all the way up to AN. Then, we just use linearity. f of x is equal to, by assumption, or because this is a canonical basis, I have that this is the x1 component times the e1 vector plus the x2 component times the e2 vector plus the xn component times the en basis vector. And that's going to be equal to, because of linearity, I can apply the distributive property over and over again to this thing to get x1 f of e1 plus x2 f of e2 plus all the way up to xn f of en. But well, we named what these guys are, right? These are just our AIs. And so this is x1 AI plus x2, or sorry, A1, A2, plus all the way up to xn, AN. But this is just matrix multiplication by A. 
times the x vector. And that's it. That's the theorem. That's the proof. As a quick corollary to this, if f from rm into r1 is linear, then there is an A in RM such that F of X is equal to A dotted with X. So dot product with X. This is, a, this is an extremely nice theorem, right? So we have functions, and these could have been anything before the theorem, but it turns out it's really simple to just show that they boil down to matrix multiplication. So functions like this are essentially just multiplication by matrices. So let's let's do a quick example where we go from a linear function, knowing knowing some values of a linear function, into figuring out what that matrix A associated with the function is. Right, so we want to find the A in our theorem, and let's suppose that F from R is from R2 into R3, and it's linear. And suppose that we know that f of 1, 2 is equal to 1, 3, 4. And say f of 2, 1 is equal to negative 2, 2, negative 2. Then from just this little piece of information, so just this, these two pieces of information and the fact that it's linear, I'm going to determine exactly what my function f is by figuring out what this matrix A is. Well, because it's linear, I know that map A is there. And so I know that in particular, the matrix A, which is just the entries here, 2, 1, A, 2, 2, A, 3, 1, A, 3, 2, 1, 2, 2, 1. I know that this is equal to, right? I'm just putting all these things into columns now. 1, 3, 4, negative 2, 2, negative 2. And so if I can invert this matrix and bring it over here, I can solve for exactly what A is. Well, I know that 1, 2, 2, 1, or I can compute that. This inverse is just well, it's 1 over the determinant of this guy, which is going to be, the determinant is going to be 1 times 1, which will be 1, minus 2 times 2, which is negative 3. So this is 1 over negative 3. And then I do this game where I flip these two, and I negate these two, and I'm going to get 1, negative 2, negative 2, 1. And that's, that's my inverse. I'm basically done. You know, I can, I can divide things out, and I have negative 1 third, two thirds here, two thirds, negative one third. And that's my matrix. And now I just multiply everything on the right. So that means that A11, A12, A21, A22, right? I'm just doing algebraic manipulations, only I am. I'm doing it with matrices, is equal to one, negative two, three, two, four, negative two, times 1, 2, 2, 1, inverse, which is equal to, I'm just going to plug this in and compute it. In the long run, you get negative 5 thirds, 4 thirds, 1 third, 4 thirds, negative 8 thirds, and 10 thirds. And you can go back and check. You plug in the columns 1, 2, and 2, 1, and you'll get the, the right answer for this. And this tells you exactly if you plug in any other x, you get the value of this function at that x.